ever had the person that asked you after watching maybe one of the Marvel or DC movies, I kind of really like this, but I'm not really a comic person. It happens to me more often than I would imagine. And then you go to suggest to them something and you stop for a second because you wonder if, should you suggest something because they like this movie or should you be suggesting something that might appeal to somebody that doesn't normally read the genre. So that's what I'm doing today. I've got five suggestions for books that can appeal to people that may not be or have ever read comics before. And as always, we're gonna think outside the box and inside the page. One's called Alias, and now just called, well, Jessica Jones Alias. This probably clued you into on what this is. See, this got a, uh, a Netflix series with Kristen Ritter and a really, really good one. So the Max series was one that was done specifically for adults, so uh, not meant for the, uh, for the kiddies. Not that it's, you know, it's not a good read. It's just that uh, there is some adult themes in here. And uh, the language does get kind of adult, especially when she's talking to uh, one of her boyfriends. The art here is really good and fits the tone of the book extremely well. Jessica Jones was a superhero, but she's not anymore. She is a private investigator. She is pretty much burnt out and she doesn't quite know where she wants to go or where she wants to take anything. So Brian Michael Bendis writes the entirety of this here with uh, a lot of this here written by, done artwork by Michael Gatiss. But we have Bill, Sank, Bill Sankiewicz, David Mack, Mark Bagley, amongst others in here. The first story really sets the tone for the, uh, for the entirety of the book. And without giving away too much, a woman walks into Jessica Jones' office and pretty much says to her that uh, she wants her to find her friend. And she does find her friend, but... Uh, Unfortunately, she finds her friend with a superhero in a position that can be compromising to him in a couple ways. And in one way, it's because it could probably out exactly who his uh, public persona is. It's a really good story, and it plays off extremely well. If you've never read Alias, uh, it, that's just the first case. And... It goes through an extremely good run. If you've ever watched the Netflix series, it is very much along that line. So if you like the Netflix series, but you want to get a deeper, more, like, bigger depth to the uh, to, to the series and what really want to get into the world of Jessica Jones and Alias, then uh, this, my friends, is going to be a fantastic book for you. Some of the art choices are extraordinary, and we get some really different stuff in here, including an issue that... Uh, Definitely has some wonderful painted artwork here. For a lot of people, especially the older generation, Adam West Batman is the only way that the new uh, superheroes and probably they grew up with them and kind of begged off before it got super serious. Well, uh, Batman 66 takes us back to the Adam West era of Batman and uh, it is absolutely gorgeous it's fun it's funny it's irreverent it's everything you would want a uh, a batman 66 to be takes all the classic villains from the old batman 60 series and adds in some newer ones like uh like bane and harley quinn and does a great job when it's utilizing the characters from the uh from the show as well look at uh, that really cool looking vincent price egghead right there the artwork is matches the show and matches the uh the writing extremely well and if you're a fan of adam west batman you're probably gonna get a lot of enjoyment out of this one 
This was put out in like uh, different books, including ones where Batman met up with other characters, including the Man from Uncle. This is the Ambus that is now unfortunately out of print, but there's some uh, graphics out here for this one. Uh, if you want to get check it out, just give it a try. And if you ever find this Ambus anywhere, much like I did, I would say grab it, grab it right away. It is really, really good. There's one story in here that is different from the other stories and has kind of a a tonal shift, but uh, you'll be glad that you uh, that you check this one out. Batman sixty six, strong recommendation. Maybe Batman 66 is a little bit too humorous or just a little bit too avant-garde for you. And that's okay because this, you can still have Gotham and be a little bit more Batman light with the incredible Ed Brubaker, Greg Rucka series, Gotham Central. Gotham Central is set in the police station uh, in Gotham. And uh, wh what's it like in one of the most corrupt cities in the world when you're a cop there and you have all these super villains that, Bat Batman could take on because he's, he's he's Batman and there's Robin and Nightwing but what about the lives of the actual cops it's really well done uh, we've got Brubaker and Rucka doing different aspects of it so one will do the night the night shift the other one will do the day shift artwork is utterly fantastic the stories just keep getting better and better and you just find yourself getting caught up in the lives of uh, these characters. Don't go in expecting uh, storylines for Commissioner Gordon. He's actually retired at this point. I think it's good because it lets us introduce and be intrigued by characters that uh, may not have gotten that spotlight before. Renee Mentai will be one of those characters that you're gonna watch and look at and just be intrigued by. There's gonna be characters here that are gonna do despicable things and you're gonna wanna both see them get their comeuppance and then find yourself rooting for them. Characters live, characters die. It's not easy being a cop in uh, in Gotham City. But it's one hell of a read. This is one of the truly best things I've ever read. And uh, it is a, whether you like comics or Batman or don't like either, uh, if as long as you're, you like crime novels, then you're going to love this. So you want Law & Order via Gotham, you want hard-boiled noir and mystery, you want tough detective thriller, they're all here. Ever know that person was a massive Star Wars fan back in the day, but they just can't do anything with Star Wars anymore? They think that The Mandalorian is probably the only newer Star Wars thing ever done that was any good, and it's lost its appeal. Well, They'll change their mind when they pick this up. Jason Aaron's run on Star Wars is so good, and it gives you all of that feel of the classic Star Wars series. See, this one here is set right after the original Star Wars. So this is before, like, he knows that... Uh, no, here's a spoiler. Luke Skywalker is, is uh, Darth Vader's son. It is set before all this has happened. It's it's right after the Death Star has been uh, destroyed for the first time, and Vader is not happy. He is out to find out more about this Scott, this new guy that actually uh, destroyed. And this is a if you like the Vader at the end of Rogue One, you're gonna like this a lot. The characters here are all written very true to the to the way they were in the original films. The artwork, as you can see, is absolutely stunning. Really fantastic all throughout. There are some great, wonderful battles here, whether it's a lightsaber battle or a space battle. There's some fantastic characterization, wonderful, wonderful artwork all the way through. A really cool crossover storyline here called Vader Down will definitely keep you on the edge of your seat. And uh, trust me, you will be uh, really interested with the characters that they introduce here throughout the story. There are some amazing characters, some great twists and turns. If you are a Star Wars fan, this is as good as it gets. Planetary Omnibus is an amazing read. This has some incredible artwork and is 
an amazing story. I don't think I can describe it better than just reading right off the back for this one right here. Because it is unique and mystery, mysterious and fun. Um, three people walk the world in search of strangeness and wonder and cover things others w wish were left covered. They are mystery archaeologists exploring this, the planet's secret history, charting the unseen borders of a fantastic world. History such as a World War II supercomputer that can access other universes, a ghostly spirit of vengeance, and an island of lost dying monsters. This is fantastic. There's 27 issues for the entire run. We get the Planetary Batman, Planetary JLA, and the Planetary Authority runs. So yeah, that Authority characters that you are probably curious about because of the new uh, James Gunn DCU, uh, they're in here. This starts off really fast, and I have to say it's uh, one that you're uh, you're going to get sucked into right away. It's one where I thought I was going to be able to read it uh, kind of like slowly. But the thing is, you won't. Because uh, once you get sucked in, you start reading this, you're reading this. You're, you're in. And you're probably going to just go right to the end of the run. It's as big as the book looks. It's actually a fairly quick read. And uh, I definitely recommend the planetary. So there we go. That's five incredible runs for of comics for people that don't read comics. If I was to start with, with either one of those, I don't know. I uh, Planetary is a really good one, and I find that a lot of people read it and come out of... They may never read another comic again, but it may be the thing that intrigues them into like reading. But if you have somebody that's a Star Wars fan and they haven't read the Jason Aaron run on Star Wars... As a Star Wars fan, it's life changing. As somebody that uh, that actually likes the uh, the other, you know, extended universe stuff, and the uh, the films, I was really shocked to find that yeah, I was missing a bit of the original Star Wars flavor too. And this delivers. So if you've been missing that too, that delivers.